Not only are rumors and threats flying around, so are the potential risks that missiles will be too. After North Korea said it would carry out a new nuclear test and launch long-range missiles at the U.S. last week, talk about what would be done to stop them has all but ceased. The possibility that North Korea is threatening a third nuclear test, previous ones occurring in 2006 and 2009, are angering the United Nations and neighboring China, who has threatened to end their financial support for North Korea. North Korea. David Siegel, associate professor for political science at Florida State University, said that the U.S. government shouldn't only be worried about missiles being launched at the U.S., but also need to be proactive in monitoring whose hands they may fall into. There's even more of a danger for um, not necessarily a missile from North Korea, but a, a sold missile or sold um, technology to other, other um, rogue actors. Other rogue actors like terrorist groups or unstable countries. Siegel warns that if weapons are sold, even stronger weapons could replace them. If they could acquire the resources, could, you know, and if the technology improves sufficiently much on the North Korean side, they could acquire some level of, um, you know, weapons of mass destruction. The man at the heart of North Korea's dictatorship pushing for the development of weapons of mass destruction is Kim Jong-un. Siegel says Un is in a rat's race to stay in power. How he does it is what Siegel thinks is fueling the nuclear production within his country. I mean, North Korea's a dictatorship, so the dictator, you know, Kim Jong-un, is, um, I mean, he relies upon his elite to, to support him. And given that his primary interest is, is in keeping his power, he has to keep his elite happy. And that requires resources by and large and to get resources he needs to have something to acquire resources with and you see this all across the world and usually the resources are garnered by some kind of you know oil or some other other natural resource they can sell because North Korea has already acquired nuclear weapons, there is less that the U.S. government can do to stop it from progressing. Siegel says the U.S. can try to block the flow of illegal materials funding the country's nuclear program, but that the process feared most by the U.S. has largely already begun. Once the country gets nuclear arms, it becomes the amount you can, the amount of pressure you can put on them becomes lessened. Right? There's a lot. I mean, the nuclear deterrent is there for a reason, and if they have the nuclear deterrent you're less likely to go and invade the country and um, stop them from having that. The pressure the U.S. can place on North Korea may be weakening, but this has given the U.S. more motives to keep nuclear-seeking countries like Iran from following suit. Because Iran does not yet have nuclear programs running, outside governments can place pressure on the interior of the country to keep the enriched uranium from turning into deadly weapons. In Iran's case, they're still developing that, and there's a window in which potentially can be stopped. And that's, I think, why the pressure's been on and the tension's been on Iran right now to try to stop them in this window. And then different observers differ on when the window is that we can actually stop them or if it's too late already or so on. Um, so I think the window of attention right now is on Iran for that reason. As North Korea already has them. They've established nuclear power, so we have limited ability to, to counter that. If there is such a threat of nuclear weapons, Siegel says even an invasion on the country could put the U.S. in an even worse situation than what they're arguably already in. Of the countries in the world that have capabilities of this kind of um, violence, I would imagine they'd be one of the least likely to resist actually launching something um, if we were to actually invade in force. The fear the U.S. has of blocking North Korea's resources, Siegel says, is proof that this is a terrorist operation. What the U.S. shouldn't do, Siegel repeatedly said, is invade North Korea. The unknown of what the reaction to U.S. troops could be, Siegel hopes, will be enough to keep the U.S. away. The idea would be to have actually a, you know, some kind of mass you know, insurrection, but that's very unlikely. I mean, if we could shut off all aid to, to North Korea, it's possible that the government might collapse, but it also might, in desperation, sell all of its nuclear technology to the highest bidder. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it's just an unpleasant situation. It's unclear how to go forward with any kind of productive outcome. The window to cave in North Korea's nuclear program may have ended, but the fight over the global nuclear upper hand seems to be anything but over. Siegel says the fact that the U.S. is a democracy makes its citizens easy prey for terrorist operations and threats. Speaking on such threats, U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta said on Thursday that North Korea has the capability to conduct these tests, but that the United States is fully prepared in case they do.
For Florida's 89.1 WUFTFM, I'm Leah Harding.